So the build of Project Easy finally came together just before we loaded it on the truck and shoved off towards its first ride in the Shikshok Mountains of Quebec. Given our tight timeline, I only had the chance to rip it around the shop a few times before we loaded too, so it's basically going untested. In fact, we only got it started for the first time just before we loaded up too, so when I say untested, I really mean it. I know it's never a good idea to take a vehicle that's just had significant mods done on it on a trip without at least going for a small shakedown run, let alone a trip that's a thousand kilometers from home. I mean, even the engine on this thing is basically unknown. Although it did test well on a compression check, we literally just got it running yesterday. I'm just happy it started. It's been a bit of a process getting all the bits and pieces together for this build. It's taken way longer than expected and shoved around our build schedule, ultimately leading to a just on time finish just before we left. I should also mention we've had one major setback or fail with this machine, and that is the fact that we don't have a turbo. Apparently finding a turbo for a 2015 Polaris is a lot harder than we thought it was gonna be. Now, we haven't completely given up on boost. We've just given up on it for now. Chronologically, this build really began this past fall when we received the sled from Spoiled Sports, one of the Polaris dealerships we get our media sleds from. It was pretty beat up and missing a few parts, like an exhaust system, but an overall good platform to start with for our eventual goal of building a boondocking sled for the Shikshoks. Because we knew we'd be working on a Polaris RMK155, the boys at the office had already managed to get a bunch of the bits we were planning to mod the sled with. However, after the initial teardown early in the season, the guys had to go on the hunt for repair parts we were going to need, like a new set of Ice Age rails for the rear skid to replace the cracked originals. This is where some of the holdups started, but this is also not my first time I've worked on a project vehicle, so delays were not totally unexpected. But I also knew that once we got the parts in, the hardest issue was going to be finding time to get back working on it between trips for STV, which ultimately turned out to be last minute right before this trip. For this build, I didn't want that cheesy car build program BS where they have some unrealistic delivery schedule or some made for TV dramatic moment about the reveal. Instead, with this build, it all happened naturally. Once I did get to work, things went eh, pretty well. We did have a few fitment issues, which weren't really the fault of the suppliers. It was more due to the fact that we were asking a bunch of aftermarket parts to fit on a bunch of different aftermarket parts. And even though all this stuff was supposed to be bolt-on, I'm still glad I had a welder and a lathe around. Having the tools and equipment in hand can make a project like this much more achievable, and if you don't have a well-equipped shop, maybe find a buddy who does. It's the little things that slow a project like this down and can stop it in its tracks if you don't have access to the tools that solve problems. That said, the issues we had were minor and only an issue because we were doing so much at once. Plus, without the turbo to complicate things, we weren't doing any powertrain mods, which can create a whole different set of problems. That stuff, we'll have to wait for the next phase of the build. So I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out, especially considering how much of a rat bag this thing was when we started. And we're here at Adventure Shick Shocks to finally ride it in its natural environment. But before I do that, let me give you the nickel tour of this thing. Now, starting with it, it we got Arctic Effects Graphics, which provided a whole new graphics wrap package for us with our logos and everybody that helped us out included on it as well. And it really changed the look of this thing from a basic crappy looking black to what you see here with the red and black, pretty awesome. Then up front, Slydog sent us a set of skis that also match our red and black theme with a red and black theme on the ski itself. That's pretty cool. And then we got skins. Uh, they've set a whole new front suspension that included outer uh, spindles, upper and lower control arms, and new radius rods for the steering. They actually narrowed it up a little bit too, and that's really nice work on that stuff. And holding it up, up front and in a skid frame in the back, is a set of Stage 5 Elka shock absorbers from Accelerated Tech. These things work really well, and even though I've just driven it a few feet, really, uh, I can already feel that they're making a difference. Moving on to the middle, we've got um, skins with their uh, low-cut mountain seat on this thing, and they also provided new running boards. Uh, so we cut the old ones off and put these ones on, which are a lot stronger. Um, underneath it all, Ice Age sent us a set of brand new rails to replace the original ones, which were busted, of course. And iTech sent along a full complement of billet idler wheels to shod that thing with. 
and the rear ones are the larger diameter ones just to make it look cool. And iTech also sent a new rear bumper, um, the gear tie down accessory here, and uh, the adapters to run the link accessories on the Polaris tunnel. Up here in the middle, we've got rocks with uh, adjustable handlebar riser that adds a couple of two and a half inches or so to the height and uh, the big elephant ears to go over uh, as roof protectors and to keep our hands warm here in the shake shock because it's cold and windy here. Um, also in the middle, which you can't see right now, but we got an MBRP exhaust in this thing. It sounds amazing, but uh, we can't run it here in the shake shock. So before we ride it, I got to change that thing out. Before we even turned the first wrench on the project, we knew we'd be coming to ride with Jonathan at Adventure Shikshok. Being an off-trail boondocking adventure, this location drove our choice to build an RMK to represent OSM and STV for this segment. And in case you never heard of the Shikshok Mountains before, they are in the Gaspé region of Quebec, right below the St. Lawrence River. This maritime area is absolutely stunning, and it's just a day's drive from Ontario. Adventure Shake Shock was born, uh, I would say, like around 2007. Like to tell you a bit about it, it was uh, I was a big time into snowboarding, and I knew this area here about for snowboarding, and I was into trail riding. But backcountry snowmobiling was not really popular. It was not popular at all. I would say here in the eastern side of Canada, uh, in 2007, around there. Uh, I went down in BC, British Columbia, out west, met the sport, fell in love with the sport, and I was like, when I came back, remember being sitting in the airplane, I said, hey, in the Chick Chuck, there's tons of like mountains, like elevation that we don't use for skiing or backcountry skiing. So it all started up like that. I started like coming riding here. It was nobody. It was one of the first to put the long track snowmobile in those mountains back in the days. And I decided to buy a little house to ride, to have like my own little place during the winter for to ride with, with my friends. And uh, it all started up like that. So started up to rent that place. And, and uh, after a few times renting that place, the guys asked me to be there while I was renting the place. And uh, Adventure Shake Shack, like uh, in 09, I decided to register. In 2009, I decided to register as a business. And boom, this is what it is now, you know having a fleet of a pro rmk that we ran we have a, a six timber sled so we offer rentals we do clinics uh we we introduce people to the backcountry riding up to intermediate to expert advanced like who people like are in uh, research of like big adrenaline we got all of this here uh when you come at adventure shake shock like uh, what a, a day looks like it's uh in the morning, you know, we all meet up for like a little uh, uh, security meeting, like explaining you the day that we're going to do and everything. And the cool thing about us, you know, it's a right in, right out concept. No need to trailer every day to, uh, to go to the spot. And we have our own groomer there. So we groom our own access to the mountain. So it's a smooth ride home. You know, you don't have to go like through moguls and stuff. Uh, so we live in the morning, approximately nine in the morning every day. And uh, we come back, I would say before dark or most of the time at the end of the energy of the boys. Not many people realize that there's this type of riding here in the east, and when you describe the area, uh, they're still apprehensive about believing you. Most riders who have a deep powder bug or mountain experience on their bucket list think you can only achieve this goal by going west to the Rockies, which can get pretty spendy for us here in the east. I mean, the thing is, you know, BC is awesome riding. Air, yes, also it's premium riding, premium technical riding. Uh, what I would say for the same money that you'll do a trip to BC, 
you might do like up to three trips on, in the Shake Shack. You know, you don't have to, you can come here with your own snowmobile or you can rent, rent one or, of uh, our snowmobile from our fleet that we have, but you can just drive, you know, it's, it's easy to get here. It's all highway all the way down and then boom, you get to that spot and there's tons of snow and fun to have here. Jonathan, along with his experienced crew of guides, will also take the time to evaluate your skills as a rider and tailor your experience to suit your skill level while at the same time challenging you to improve. And if you're a complete novice to the deep pow, they will even take the time to run a clinic with you and your group to give you the basic skills needed to begin riding the backcountry. To tell you that Chick Chock Mountains have a little bit of everything to offer, but yes, there is a lot of technical terrain, but you'll find some wide open stuff so every kind of rider will find, you know, what they're looking for. And as we guide them, you know, like we, we like to give clinics and we teach them the sport. So, you know, like uh, you'll walk in here as a beginner and you'll walk out as a rock star. You know, the great part about snowmobiling is this. This is the great part about snowmobiling. That's incredible. I mean, you could not tell me like that I'm within a reasonable drive time from home. Yeah, you have that. look at this photo. Wow. Beautiful photo. So me and a group of about like seven buddies, uh, we're all from uh, Boston, Mass. And um, we just started getting into mountain riding about a couple of years ago. We went to Steamboat, Colorado last year, and uh, we've been following the Vincent Chick Chocks and uh, want to try it out. And uh, so far it's been really good. <laughs> It's like a 15 hour drive. Rain the whole time is miserable, but uh, the day after we got here, it was just like a fresh foot of snow on the ground and you come up here and it's just like another foot on top of that. It's perfect. It's a blast. I mean, we came up, it's my birthday today. It's just a beautiful day out. The cabin's perfect. It sleeps all of us, three bathrooms, three showers. It's, you couldn't ask for a better time. Uh, we have people at Adventure Shake Shack that come from all over the place. Like these guys that we have today, they're from Massachusetts, Boston area. So a lot of people drive, I would say, between 8 and 20 hours to come and see what we have here. This is a really unique place. Most of the people think like uh, when they're thinking about like mountain riding, everybody think out west, out west, but it's, it's, it's starting to be no more and more, but the Chick Chuck, it's a really unique place. We have like an average of snowfall of uh, seven meter, which is like 21 feet of snow every season. And we got good mountain. So what's cool about it, you know, our peak elevation, it's about 4,000 feet. Uh, so at 4,000 feet with a good, good snow, like, uh, like I said, you know, like uh, over 10 feet of snow, 4,000 feet means the machine have plenty of power. After our lunch at the warm-up shack, Jonathan and Jesse took us to some other play areas just off the network of trails and old logging roads that crisscross the riding range. Everywhere you look, there are places to dive off and play in the technical treed zones, but you also realize that without a guide or some serious GPS orienteering knowledge, this area would be a pretty easy one to get turned around in. After years of experience, the crew at Adventure Shick Shock knows this place like the back of their hand. And just like riding in the West, having a guide here is just as important. I'll show you what time it is. I'll get you some skills on those sled guys, okay? Uh, I want to show you how to do like what we call a powder hook. But to do that, okay, and you keep wrapping, wrap, 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 and then turning once. It's a point where you want to go 180 degrees, you release the throttle, 
So the sled will go back on both skis and you keep going. Inside! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah, your eyes up and your chin up. You look where you go. Don't look at your ski. That's perfect. Don't look at me. Look where you want to go. Yeah. Yes. That is perfect. Woohoo! Yes. Easy cheesy. Huh? <laughs> Easy cheesy. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know what time it is. Can you? Can you show me what time it is? I'll show you what time it you is. You show me what time it is. Take that sled and show me what time it is. <laughs> Boom! Be spectacular! Don't worry, I'll be happy. I hope not it survives. Not responsible if I broke anything. No, no, you can break it. So fine. All we got to do is get it home. Yeah, you can break it. It's fine. All we got to do is get it out of here. But that's going to be uh, their problem. <laughs> Now, in all fairness, the sled is like right out of the shop. We haven't done any setup with it to this point. This is literally shaking it down. Really, I'm just happy it's still moving right now. Like, this is a success for me. It's moving and doing that. It goes like this, so that's not eh. Yeah. So if it's stuck, boom, the front end will lift. Yeah. you give throttle. I don't think they're impressed. <laughs> no, okay. It's your turn now. I can't do that. That's why you're on it. So you know what time it is? It's a chick chuck time. After two days of riding here at Adventure Chick Shock with the Project RMK, I'm just super happy it's still moving. We took a chance bringing an untested sled all the way out here. It could have gone really bad. Now, I'm not sure if Jonathan was overly impressed with the handling, but then again, he got off his own personal 850 Chaos that's been modified with stuff like a clutch kit and lowering gears. And you can't forget that the Chaos is also a completely new generation of RMK compared to our machine. Unlike the name suggests, a build like this is never easy. And once it's together, testing and tuning is just as important as the parts we put on to get them all working together. I could feel the potential though, but the shocks and suspension are definitely going to take the most time to dial in. In the whoops, the Elkus had excellent control in the moguls, but honestly probably too much. I think I need to sacrifice some of this control here to make it a bit more flicky in the deeper snow. Easy didn't seem to be as nimble in the powder as the newer Chaos, which was confirmed by Jonathan and Jesse after they rode it, so it's not just my lack of skill in the powder. They suggested getting some more preload in the center spring and maybe let out the limiter and start playing with rebound to get the machine to pop out of the snow easier. I also think that the bars are a little bit too high, so in addition to the guy's suggestions, I'm going to take some of the rise out as well. I'd also like to reinstall the front sway bar, but that will involve welding a couple of tabs on the skin's lower control arms. These adjustments are all things I'll have plenty of time to think about on the drive home, but in addition to the ideas on improving easy, I'm also taking home an excellent snowmobiling memory of the Shik Shocks. This entire region is simply spectacular. The riding, the quaint towns, the food, and the views along the shore of the St. Lawrence make this place one of the most picturesque in all of Canada. We really do have some awesome terrain in this country. Now, that's it for this adventure with Adventure Shik Shock, but I don't think this will be the last time I'm holding on to handlebars in this region. But that'll have to be for the future. <laughs>